Let's go back to Washington now. Joining us for more on, uh, well, everything happening on uh, at the Supreme Court today, uh, former acting U.S. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Sir, good morning to you. Uh, the Supreme Court will hear arguments today involving the president's student loan forgiveness plan, which, if upheld, would forgive more than 40 million borrowers' debt. Uh, this is expected to take months, though, right? Yeah, it is. Obviously, writing the opinion uh, follows the oral arguments. Uh, and it's good to be with you both today, uh, Allison and Rob. I think this case is really going to expand this idea of the major questions doctrine that the Supreme Court has been uh, evolving over uh, the most recent terms. Uh, you know, Gorsuch was the first one to introduce that concept, and we saw it sort of flourish in the uh, EPA versus West Virginia and North Dakota cases. Uh, in this case, obviously, uh, the White House has has grab some language from post 9-11 um, uh, legislation that, that suggests that they can forgive uh, student loan debt. I think the Supreme Court is going to probably pair that power back. Obviously, uh, if the White House can unilaterally act without Congress's explicit approval, I think that is opens a, a whole a host of uh, issues uh, that this White House and its activist um, president, you know, could could want to uh, implement some real liberal um, ideas. Good point. Mr. Attorney General, I wanted to get your reaction uh, to a bill out in Idaho. Kind of an odd story here, but it basically would establish execution by firing squad as a backup to lethal injection, just because there have been so many problems with le lethal injection uh, over the last several decades. Uh, we haven't seen somebody... Um, killed by firing squad since 2010. Does this bill have a chance? Yeah, well, I mean, as someone that worked closely on this issue of the death penalty protocol when I was in the Trump administration, and we successfully implemented one, the drugs uh, to do lethal injection are very hard to obtain. Uh, they're usually manufactured outside of the United States. And so uh, the FDA has taken a position that you can't import those. Uh, you know, we we fought a lot of battles internally on those issues. And so an alternate uh, to lethal injection is necessary. And, you know, the real question is, how do you overcome uh, the Constitution's, um, you know, prevention against cruel and unusual punishment? Is a firing squad uh, meet that standard? Certainly we've used it in our past and as well as other methods for execution, and we'll see uh, if Idaho is successful. But certainly, uh, as long as the people of the United States and of various states want the death penalty, we should certainly have a way that, that, that the people's will and juries uh, that convict uh, these sociopaths of, of heinous crimes yeah. uh, can have their verdict implemented. Yes, agree. Sir, I want to get your reaction to this report that says that the coronavirus potentially was leaked from this lab in Wuhan, China. A lot of people who said that were censored. A lot of people who said that were, were called conspiracy theorists. The White House kind of downplaying it as well as media outlets. But take a listen to what Jake Sullivan had to say. Here's what I can tell you. President Biden has directed repeatedly uh, every element of our intelligence community to put effort and resources behind getting to the bottom of this question. And one of the things in that Wall Street Journal report, uh, which I can't confirm or deny, but I will say the reference to the Department of Energy, President Biden specifically requested that the national labs, which are part of the Department of Energy, be brought into this assessment because he wants to put every tool at use uh, to be able to figure out what happened here. And if we gain any further insider information, we will share it with Congress and we will share it with the American people. But right now, there is not a definitive answer that has emerged from the intelligence community on this question. Sir, what do you make of this? It's just still stonewalling. It is. And what I make of it is that there obviously this administration knows that it, the most likely explanation is that it came from the lab in Wuhan. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, you know, you apply Occam's razor, the most likely explanation is the explanation. We're going to continue to get more and more information. Obviously, it points to uh, really the Chinese Communist Party and how they will not share information about the origins of this. And, and I think that, you know, the Biden administration has not been tough on China. And this is another example where they won't hold them accountable. But, you know, in my 
uh, experience. I think you know the the FBI, even with their challenges, does a pretty good job on intelligence uh, and assessment. And they've already concluded that this was a lab leak. Uh, now that the Department of Energy has come along, I think you're going to continue to see uh, that narrative. What once dismissed as a conspiracy theory, if you remember, right. now become really the most likely explanation. I'm not sure we'll ever get a definitive answer, but I think the most likely explanation is the lab link. Yeah, we seem very close. It was your, you used to run the Justice Department as Attorney General. Uh, the FBI concluded that it came from a lab. Uh, now the Department of Energy. I should say Joe Biden's Department of Energy concluding that likely COVID leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. We'll keep an eye on it. Big story right now. Uh, great to see you again. Former Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both.